In this video, we're going to have a look at a whole heap of things. Oh, shit. New machine. A Kent KGS 200 surface grinder. I've been after a surface grinder for quite a while now. So why would I want one? Well, all the cool cats have one. Having a surface grinder is going to allow a whole new level of precision I couldn't achieve before. So it's going to allow fancy new fixturing, tool making, and a whole range of things that I couldn't even dream of achieving before. So that's quite exciting. I'm going to do some work to turn this also into a bit of a cylindrical grinder and a tool and cutter grinder. So that's something I'm very excited for. I've got a lot of end mills where I've chipped the tips and broken them, but if I can re-grind it, all of a sudden I've got my money back. So that helps justify buying this somehow. So if we look at the surface grinder and then compare it to the mill, the surface grinder has a bigger work envelope than the mill. So if I can mill it, I can surface grind it. Over the course of the first afternoon and evening, all the small items were moved. However, assessing the door height, it didn't look like the machine would fit through the doorway with the column in intact. Some work was required to remove the column. This is the central lubrication for all the ways. This guy needs to come out and stop this getting contaminated. Plop. I can't get this guy back through the hole. So unfortunately, problem solved. Don't lose that. Click. Click. Yeah. Click. So it's removed the column. All this is disconnected. However, I've got to deal with the motor power cable here. It runs down through, out through here, and into the control box. Filming this as much for myself as for you. It was at this point that I started assessing the mechanical arrangement and decided to check to see if the column could actually stay on. Re-measuring the door, it turns out there was 40 millimetres of clearance. Two evenings down, now I've got a full day to sort out this guy. Right, you ready? Yep, right. The access to my shed is very tight, but the trailer was just able to swing in. An unconventional lifting method of two engine hoist was used. In all caution, this is dangerous. The surface grinder is loaded with a forklift into the centre of the trailer, which is great for transport. However, lifting it off was a problem at my end. Using the two engine hoist, I was able to lift the front edge and I was able to use a ratchet strap to stabilise and pull the column forwards. I'm going to pre tension it backwards. The ratchet strap had to be re tensioned multiple times as the machine moved forwards. We're half one, yeah? At this point we stop for lunch. Note that you should never leave a suspended load hanging, hence the car jacks. Continuing the unconventional lifting, the grinder has been lowered on three to four points. The 
the two engine hoist still at the front and leapfrogging the jack support in layers at the back end. And the whole time while lowering the ratchet strap was maintained for stability. Doesn't look so big now, does it? And now to fix everything, I've disassembled to remove the column. I'm filing this down for a nice fit. And then I'll reinsert it. So I didn't need to cut this at all, so now I'm going to put this back on. Fear. Oil, who put that there? Plop. Yeah. Okay, cover your eyes. Oh, hang on. I don't think it's got oil, but not seeing air bubbles. I'm running out of elbow grease. Wait a sec. And now I can claim any dirt on this thing is mine. I earned that grime. Absolute kent of a job. Time to get this thing off bricks. Okay, here's where things will get dodgy. Rather than crossing the diagonal, I'm just gonna go on one side. This is dangerous, it's less stable. The problem is these can slip off. Extremely danger. One benefit of this arrangement, the engine hoist legs actually brace against each other. Otherwise they'd be able to take off to centre under the load. And the eagle has landed. Finally got off bricks. So we're over at the dust extractor. And the previous owner stored a lot of stuff in the coolant tank. <laughs> Oh, this is foul. Oh, right, what do we got? Yay, score. Let's get rid of these rags. <coughs> you have no idea how bad that smells. Ah, hey, diamond dresser. Also got ballways for the table. I think that's it. I don't have to wash those. Now it's playing on the table, and the air taps is traversing mechanism. The traversing mechanism on this surface grinder is this drum here. This braided wire is wrapped around multiple times and locked off at either end of the table, and that's how it travels. These are obviously the now disinfected ball sliders. The old wire rope doesn't have a lot of extra length and is difficult to handle, and it's terribly frayed. So I've got some new wire, and it's ever so slightly larger. All the tensioning bolts have a through bore and had to be drilled slightly larger. I tried poking it under, didn't have a great deal of success. Tried taping it on, no luck. I even tried resorting to hot glue. Ah, still no good. Ah, come on, yes, 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 yes. In the end, poking it and using tweezers was the answer. And after a lot of screwing around, I got it to this point. Yes. Success. At this point I'm just trying to set this up so it lands 
central. So I need the ball ways to be central on the track when it goes down. You can see there's a lot of backlash in the system. After adjusting the tensioning bolts, I got it so there was almost no backlash. With the way covers removed from when I previously thought I had to remove the column, I decided I might as well clean them. Reinstalling the way covers was a challenge with multiple failed attempts. No, 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 no. Ah. And after much mucking around, I found a manual. This helped greatly for determining the correct order for placement of the covers. The surface grinder's mag chuck made a convenient table to hold and align the guides. And with the use of some tape, it went quite easy. Sometimes simple is best. Come apart now. And then it was time to clean out the coolant tank. A smarter person would have done it before removing all the small items, anyway. I planned on moving it away from my shed so it was easy to clean up the mess and this crappy wood wheelbarrow was not a good idea. Hmm. Whoop, maybe a bad idea. <clears throat> oh shit! Whoops. Ay, ay, ay. With a lot of potentially dangerous dust inside this, I wore a respirator until I got everything a bit more cleaned up. There we go, there's all the filth. Oh. Oh. Wasn't expecting it to be quite so liquid. And we are clean. And if you work for a lab of infectious diseases, let me know if you want a sample. Delicious. Now to check the grinding wheel. I made a simple pin spanner in order to remove the wheel. Oh, that was easy. I performed a ring test to check that the wheel was intact. Sounds good to me. The main reason why I wanted to do a ring test was all this chipping on here. And I had no idea what the condition of this stone was like. Actually it looks to be decent. Now I'm going through the process of making a balancing arbor to balance the wheel. Nice fit, almost no play. It even seems to run true on that thread. That's awesome. So a couple of quick things about this arbor. These ends would be better if they were cylindrically ground. They're just turned. And I've made sure that these diameters are exactly the same. I didn't want to use sandpaper and polish these because I'd probably lose the roundness and that defeats the whole purpose. 
I did lightly deburr it with Scotch Bright just to make sure there was nothing to catch on here. So these are nice and smooth. All right. I made a crude balancing ring using gauge blocks and a rubber band. This is incredibly surprising. The heavy spot is actually the side that's got all the chips on it. You can see I'm progressively pecking holes into the heavy side to improve balance. Now onto the wiring. I only have single phase power and all of this equipment is three phase. So I'm going to use a VFD in order to run it. Sounds promising. Now one thing to be careful of these, they do stay live for a fair while. So with this setup, I've made all my connections down here and using my own connectors. I'm not using any of this other stuff in this box. I've got all these switches. I don't fully understand it. I'm not an electrician. People are shocked when they find that out. Yes, there are protective fuses in here and that sort of thing that can protect me. Problem is if I don't understand this and I wire it up wrong, it's more dangerous. And I know the VFD has a lot of protection in it. So I'm gonna rely on that and not rely on the inbuilt old electrics that I don't understand. Okay, so we started out with this guy. Turns out he's not big enough. This is 240 volt three phase output. I thought it was 240 volt input to then output three phase 415 volt. No good. Technically it runs the motors, but way too slow. So we go from this guy to his big brother. All up, I need close to two horsepower. This is actually five horsepower. This is the smallest one I can get. It's, it's fine, for a surface grinder it needs to be running continuously. More capacity is better. Look at the heat sink and the capacitors in this guy. Okay, wish me luck. Our dust extractor is spinning the right way. Fantastic. Coolant spinning the right way. You could say I'm pumped. And there it is, set up. This guy has an IP rating of 20. So not ideal for a metal workshop. IP 20 pretty much means you can't stick your fingers in. It's got zero dust protection, which isn't great around a surface grinder. I'm gonna make an enclosure. I think check her out. So off to the side I made the panel and did a terrible job containing the silicon. And on the back side I've just used hot glue. So I've got a double seal and the hot glue makes it a more rigid connection. Something tells me a nylock would be prudent. Okay, I know I haven't dressed the mag chuck yet, but I'm really eager to try this. Bottom of this has been stoned off. Let's give it a go. Got a fair bit of chatter on him. Something tells me the chip stone didn't help. We'll get there. Well, that's about it. Dress in rags and buy a surface grinder, the way it should be. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.